In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you all. We welcome you with great joy to the Mass. We celebrate together this lovely, early spring, early summer, beautiful morning. Today, Jesus has indeed risen. Today is the first Sunday of May, and so we have a special devotion to Our Lady, and the little children will crown Mary and sing her praises when they return from children's liturgy. So we've got a lovely wee girl here. Her name is Zara. So Zara, come forward to receive the word of God. It's in a language especially designed for your level of understanding. So share it, Zara, with all of your friends. And we invite any children from about age four onwards to join Zara for the children's liturgy in the church upstairs. And we call to mind our sins, and we will ask for God's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. For the readers of prayers begin on page 200. And 65, 265, and now the opening prayer. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing on the day of resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please take a seat for the readings. In the first reading, despite repeated warnings from the Sanhedrin, nothing will prevent the apostles and the followers of Jesus from saying, he isn't dead, he's not dead, he's risen, he's no longer in the tomb, he's alive, he's well. Let's listen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The high priest demanded an explanation of the apostles. We gave you a formal warning, he said, not to preach in this name, and what have you done? You have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and seem determined to fix the guilt of this man's death on us. In reply, Peter and the apostles said, obedience to God comes before obedience to men. It was the God of our ancestors who raised up Jesus, but it was you who had him executed by hanging on a tree. By his own right hand, God has now raised him up to be leader and savior, to give repentance and forgiveness of sins through him to Israel. We are witnesses to all this. We and the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. They warned the apostles not to speak in the name of Jesus and release them. And so they left the presence of the Sahendrin, glad to have had the honor of suffering humiliation for the sake of the name. The word of the Lord. Amen. 
Today's response is, I will praise you, Lord, you have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord, for your mercy. I will praise you, Lord, you have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord. I will praise you, Lord, you have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord, for your mercy. I will praise you, Lord, you have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord. I will praise you, Lord, you have rescued me. reading from the book of the Apocalypse. In my vision, I, John, heard the sound of an immense number of angels gathered around the throne and the animals and the elders. There were 10,000 times 10,000 of them and thousands upon thousands shouting. The lamb that was sacrificed is worthy to be given power riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. Then I heard all the living things in creation, everything that lives in the air and on the ground and under the ground and in the sea crying to the one who is sitting on the throne and to the lamb, be all praise, honor, glory, and power forever and ever. And the four animals said, Amen. And the elders prostrated themselves to worship. 
the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint John. We'll do the shortened form. Jesus showed himself again to the disciples. It was by the Sea of Tiberias, and it happened like this. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two more of his disciples were together. And Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. And they replied, we'll come with you. They went out, got into the boat, and caught nothing that night. It was light by now, and there stood Jesus on the shore, though the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. And he called out, have you caught anything, friends? And when they answered no, he said, throw the net out to the starboard, and you will find something. So they dropped the net, and there were so many fish that they could not haul it in. And the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. At these words, it is the Lord. Simon Peter, who had practically nothing on, wrapped his cloak around him and jumped into the water. The other disciples came on in the boat, towing the net and the fish. They were about a hundred yards from land. As soon as they came ashore, they saw there was some bread there and a charcoal fire with fish cooking on it. And Jesus said, bring some of the fish you have just caught. And Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net to the shore full of big fish, 153 of them. And despite of there being so many, the net wasn't broken. And Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples was bold enough to ask, Who are you? They knew quite well it was the Lord. And Jesus then stepped forward, took the bread, and gave it to them, and the same with the fish. This was the third time that Jesus showed himself to the disciples after rising from the dead. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. Please take a seat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I took my sister Jane on holiday to celebrate her birthday. She'd never speak to me again if I give an exact number. Somewhere in the 70s, we'll settle for that. I took her to Hungary. And in Hungary, we met Father Gabor and his mother. Gabor is the priest at St. Peter's. His mother, Annika, has a house in Budapest. She looks after 17 people 
17, they're all aged, they've all got mental problems or physical problems. They drift in and out of the house all day long. This is how she praises God. She's now a lady also in her late 70s. So coming back at the airport, I'm sitting beside a man who's got a sling over his shoulder, onto his arm. He's holding something, and he's talking words of comfort. And he rocks the little sling back and forth. So I tapped him on the shoulder and I said, can I have a look at your little baby? And he pulled aside a little flap, and a tiny head looked at me, little shivering. It was a dog, little shivering dog, a Pomeranian. I said, how did you get that through the customs? How did you get it through immigration? How did you get it through passport? And the X-ray images. And he said, listen to my story. <laughs> he's, he's from Ukraine. He'd been out to Ukraine, now working in Manchester, working in IT. His house had been bombed, okay? His house in Chernitsa. Showed me a photograph of the house. Showed me a photograph of the house. It's just a wreck, okay? Showed me a photograph of his mother. His mother was hit by three pieces of shrapnel. She's lying there on the ground. There's a blanket, and the blanket is covered with blood. She can't walk. She's 62 years of age. He's been out to Ukraine to rescue her dog. Risked his life. Brought the little dog back to Manchester, where he works in IT. And now, very shortly, he tells me he'll go back out to Ukraine risking his life to bring his 62-year-old mother back to this country where he hopes she will get the best of treatment and where she can rebuild her life. So I asked, are these images that we see on the television, are they all true? Well, he's got them in his phone. I saw them all. Terrible Chernitsa. I saw the bridge quite near where he lives which they destroyed so the tanks couldn't pass by. I saw the shattered house. I saw the wounded mother. So amid the horror of war, there's always love. A little bit of tenderness to make us believe, just a little bit more, that human nature isn't all bad. The love of a young man for his mother. Risk his life for a dog. She's a widow. So I just thought I'd share that with you today. And imagine the reunion when Igor and his mother and the little dog meet together for the first time. Be lovely. Live together in peace. That's all they're looking for. Images of great tenderness. Look at the gospel today, the tenderness with which Jesus speaks to his disciples. I'm a fisher. Fished all my life. I was born with a fisher rod right in my hand. And in all my days in Orkney, my parish in Aviemore, my parish in Dorney, not in Aberdeen, I don't have to tell you. But I love fishing. I know what it's like to be in the river bank as somebody passes by. Have you caught anything today? And I shamefully say, no, you know, I'm on my way to the fish and chip shop. <laughs> so I know what it's like. But Jesus doesn't say, you know, you guys are really stupid. You know, step aside. I am the son of God. You know, he doesn't shame them. He doesn't humiliate them. He just says, hey, let's stretch the water over there. Did you ever consider maybe dropping the nets there instead? Well, he does. And the cast represents one of each of the types of fish known to the Greek philosophers. Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle said there are 153 different fishes. That's the exact total that was caught today. And Jesus addresses Peter. He says, how much do you love me? He says it three times. He's not addressing Peter. He's addressing me, Father Peter. But he's also addressing you. He's addressing every one of us. How much do you love me? Show it. Do you prefer your business connections? Do you prefer your golfing companions? What do you do on a Sunday? Is there burgers and ice cream at the beach? No, we come to Mass. We show God how much we love him. And so St. Peter, well, he loves him 
and he will in fact lay down his life. So how does St. Peter die? He's crucified upside down because he doesn't feel worthy to be crucified in the same manner as our Lord Jesus. It's in a piece of ground that used to be used for horse racing. He loves deeply, he pays the price, his body is dumped exactly where he lies. He dies with his head brushing against the ground, touching the soil, buried in the dust, buried in the humus, because the humble man now lives in unimaginable glory. In the bidding prayers, we pray for the people in the war zone, the vision of Isaiah to turn swords into plowshares. Swords kill people, but plowshares make bread and feed people. Jesus says, what would you prefer? Turn swords into plowshares. We were asked to pray for Shona. She contacted me. She wanted to come to Mass today to give thanks to God on her 74th birthday. Instead, she's not well, so she's listening through the little eye of the camera. She's listening from home. So, God bless Shona. You've had 74 years to date. I'd like my sister an exact number. <laughs> yeah, don't tell her. Yeah, she lives in Sheffield. I hope she's not listening today. So God bless you. That you've led a very good life. She meets us on Zoom on a Wednesday night. We pray for Celia Wilson, the last stages of cancer. We're told at 64, a sister present among us. We pray for Bobby, a neighbor who's not well. We pray for Edgar and Vanessa. They're present here today, celebrating their 15th wedding anniversary. Wow, beautiful. It's really lovely. They've the asked for a special blessing. Every year, the monks at Plus go down and have a series of lectures, different theme, different theologian. This year, it's very interesting, the theme. The theme is not a sin to be glad that you're alive. That's lovely. It's not a sin to be glad that you're alive. Pursue God, even in an age of agitation. That's the theme. Don't let anybody ever rob you of your sense of joy and your sense of fun. Don't ever let anybody rob you of that. And we ask your ladies' intercession at these perilous times in which we live. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We have an entrance hymn number 371. We'll sing it together.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For your goodness, we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. It'll become for us the bread of life. Yes. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And Lord, wash away all my iniquities. Cleanse me, Lord, from all of my sins. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings from your rejoicing church, and as you have given us cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring, bread and wine, may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The children have now come from their children's liturgy. They're going to come to the front of the church to pay a little homage to Our Lady. As they do so, we'll sing them to the church with the lovely hymn, Bring Flowers of the Rarest, number 73. We'll sing the first two verses. The hymn is number 73 in your hymn book. That's number 73. I just said that. <laughs> And the, and the children can repeat after me, O oh Mary, I give you the lily of my heart. 
be the my queen today and forever. <laughs> the little Catherine over here has got the crown. It is her privilege today on a ladies' feast just to place that crown gently onto the head of the mother in heaven, the mother of all living things. They've done very well. We have very, we have excellent catechists, and we have the loveliest of children. They deserve a little round of applause. <laughs> and we're going to sing them back to their places with the third verse of the lovely hymn, which, uh, yeah. Sing in chorus the The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for God so loved the world that in his mercy he sent us the Redeemer to live like us in every way except sin, so that you might live in us, love us as you loved your son Jesus, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we to give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Dear indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Mm -hmm. 
But in the same way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Was for giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. And let us proclaim together the mystery of our faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. I remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, you, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. We'll stand and we'll pray with great confidence to the Father, using the words which Jesus, who is our Saviour, taught us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all anxiety as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord, 
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, I eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring me condemnation, but health in mind and in body. This is the Lamb of God who takes away all the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We need Eucharistic ministers, please, please, please. Thank you. probably do with another two from any parish anywhere in the world.
Our communion hymn this morning is number 263 in your thin book, I Will Be With You. We have a couple in the parish celebrated their 15th wedding anniversary and they have requested today a little blessing to invite Edgar and Vanessa to come forward to God's holy altar for a little prayer and a blessing. Edgar and Vanessa, may the Lord keep you safe all the days of your life. May he be your comfort in adversity. May he be your support in prosperity, may he fill your home with many blessings. 
Amen. Lord, bless you for the rings that you gave to each other on your wedding day. Bless, O Lord, these rings, which we continue to bless in your name, so that those who wear them, Edgar and Vanessa, may remain entirely faithful to God and to each other. May they abide in God's peace, follow his will, and live always in mutual charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may God bless you today and always, Vanessa, Edgar, and your family. The communion antiphon. Jesus said to his disciples, Come and eat. And he took bread, he blessed it, and he gave it to them. Let's thank God for his gift in a moment of precious silence. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant we pray that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. You'll find bulletins at the back of the church if you don't already have, giving the timetable for the week. And so they're looking for street pastors, somebody to work in administration for about, I think, 16 hours per week. It's a wonderful task. I'm sure somebody among you is free and able and knows how to work a computer. So there's the little request. It's on the porch of the church also. I've put a little envelope at the back of the church, very simple, and on it I have written, ask me another with a question mark. So if anybody has got any sort of questions, this came up at the synod gatherings that we had. You know, just put a question into the little envelope provided. It can be anything. Why do we genuflect at Mass, for example? You know, why do priests take vows of celibacy and obedience to the bishop and so on? And I'll try and answer them as best I can. I've also written an article for the latest Light of the North, which you can find online. It's a story of finding a tortoise, looking after a tortoise. I love animals when I was the priest in Aviemore. We are going to divide the catechism classes now into the top for seven years of age and over, and to the little hall at the side here for young children four to six. Okay. Lovely to see you all today. Thank you for your presence. And could uh, I thank just, you for um, people. Could I just also mention that in this current edition of Light of the North, there is an article written by myself as my duty as the parish organist. So that you'll find an article in the Light of the North as well as well as Father Peter's um, article. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for watching at home. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass has ended. Go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn. It's number 54. We'll sing it together.
Yeah. 